Welcome back to our discussion this evening on the show. And I just want to go straight to you, Kibe. You had something to say before the yes, break. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, in order to talk about the, this political crisis, mm -hmm. eh? the political crisis to a very good extent, eh? much as it is real in the sense that uh, we are all afraid what would happen after 26 because we, we seem to be in a fighting mood, eh? the, the two major divides in Kenya. It is also important to remember that uh, this is the first time that you are having a contestant for power effectively getting into a behavior that amounts to repudiation of the legitimacy of elections as the only route to be able to get power. Because at the end of the day, when you hear people saying, let's talk, let's talk, let's do this, what is at stake? is really the power that uh, the constitution of Geja gives to Monaichi to decide the two of you would want to govern Kenya. Half of us, as the constitution provides, decide who that person is going to be. So that in Kenya also, the crisis also needs to be defined that it is not a genuine one. It is a triggered crisis by, by just pulling out and saying the mechanism that is provided by the constitution to, uh, to, say, to resolve this issue, we are not going to use that mechanism anymore. And, that, and, then, and then that's why now you, you, are in, you are in a difficulty because how do you resolve this dispute? And therefore, even as we go forward to say how are we going to resolve this problem, mm -hmm. it is also important to remember that why do we have, because originally you had pro-democracy movement. This NASA now is, is taking the shoes of an anti-democracy movement. How Actually, so? because uh, if, how so yeah. in the sense that uh -huh. when you <clears throat> set out to say we can solve the issue of governance, uh -huh. not through elections, but without elections. This is a big problem. Again, this is, is not this true. Is a big I problem. mean, I, I, I think, and again, mm -hmm. this is where, where if we get stuck into the, in, the, in the narratives being portrayed by these two sides, we lose the point. You know, the fact is, um, if you look at the content of what uh, uh, NASA is saying, it's not a repudiation of elections. What they are saying is we want a credible election. So they're not saying we don't like elections. You know, um, and I think we need to be honest um, uh, about that. You know, and so they're saying, let's talk about how we can get to a point where we've got a credible election. That's why all this talk I hear, Nusum Kate, I think whatever, that's a fiction. All that is really just fiction. fiction. I, I, I <laughs> agree you know, with it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a truth. This is what they yeah. say. This is what their irreducible minimums are about. This is what they want to talk about. You know, and so, I'm not saying so, that they are themselves blameless. And I agree uh -huh. to you, uh, uh, with you that um, I think that NASA have also sort of kind of pushed this um, beyond what I would consider reasonable. I mean, I think the IBC did do some rather credible steps mm -hmm. or go some way towards trying to address the things that they had put in um, uh, as their irreducible minimums. Uh -huh. And I think there needs to be acknowledgement of that. Okay. But that doesn't, I think, obviate the need for us to sit down. And I think this discussion should not just be between the two people. Uh -huh. The stakeholders are the people of Kenya. All right. And I okay. think the mistake we have done and we have kept doing is we have always left it to the politicians. Uh -huh. In uh, the IPPG talks of 97, that it became just the guys About in parliament the talking. Uh, and deciding there. on who IABC would IEBC again okay. last year, 2016, right. it's just parliamentarians uh -huh. and politicians talking. Yeah. We need to get away from that and have okay. a real national discussion All right. yeah. about the sort of system we want. Uh, let, let me comment briefly on what uh, Kibia said. And Is it a triggered crisis? Well, it's, is it's, it not genuine? It, it, it's, 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 it's genuine crisis. It's mm -hmm. not a triggered crisis. But time and again, and I've watched, especially the other side, make very, very sad comments that are not backed by history. To the person of uh, Odinga, or the Odinga family for that matter, that oh, all that they're interested in is, is, is political power. I mean, our history speaks and challenges that very substantially. At independence, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga had the opportunity of forming the government. He refused. In fact, he started a slogan, and uh, Uhuru na Kenyatta. This is documented in our history. Now, in, 19, in 2002, Raila Odinga, who is constantly being accused of being power hungry, did the unthinkable, endorsed Kibaki, and the, that, uh, that triggered the process that led us 
to, first of all, defeating Kanu for the first time, the Independence Party, but also the path that led us to the 2010 Constitution. Now, let me talk about what the Constitution says about election. And I've, I've worked in election. That is, I've, done, I've studied election. The 2017 election was probably one of the worst in our history. And especially if you wow, look at the it, worst the worst. Okay. Again, is the re and I can, I can support that. Okay. In the previous elections, we had the old constitution that imposed no standards. In the 2010 constitution, one of the reasons why it has been hailed as progressive and transformative is because of what it did on devolution, reconfiguring the state through devolution, elaborate chapters on the Bill of Rights, and elaborate chapters on representation or and elections. Now, the constitution imposes a standard. Article 1, Article 38, and Article 81 that talks about the general principles of voting. My brother, what the Supreme Court did was not to fix an election within 60 days. Far from it. They did that, but they say that that election had to be held in strict conformity. Kibi Mungai here has conveniently avoided that. And so has Jubilee uh, uh, leadership. They constantly forget that the, what the Supreme Court said was that the, the election, the fresh election, had to be held in strict conformity with the constitution and election laws. None other than the chairperson of the elect, Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, whose responsibility that vests, has gone and admitted in public that the pres prevailing conditions cannot guarantee an election, a credible election, in strict conformity to the constitution. That is a key word. The 2010 constitution shifted elections from quantity elections to quality elections. All right. Reaching that is talk. a lot. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. This is your moment. Keep so, you know, uh, let's be honest with ourselves. If the Supreme Court said you hold the elections in accordance with the constitution, you are two contestants, the main ones. Now, if one side of the contestant says and the constitution is already there. You go and define your irreducible minimums to change the terrain, and you say that uh, the constitution now that uh, the Supreme Court is talking about is not the constitution that existed 1st of September, but it is the constitutions as defined by yourselves. I think there is uh, an obvious problem in that, as in the law that was supposed to apply is a constitution as we knew it on 1st of September, not the one that we knew it after 12th of September when you had these irreducible minimums. But equally importantly is this, that since the Supreme Court, neither, not the Supreme Court, not any candidate has a choice on the issue of the consequences, because these matters are governed by the constitutions. You succeed on one issue, a presidential election was nullified. Now, the NASA people also are not talking about the fact that you effectively got three orders. Order number one, nullifying the election. That has largely been obeyed by Jubilee. They have gone for the election, albeit reluctantly. Number two, IBC to conduct the elections. They have started a fight over it. In the Number three, conformity. yes, but that one until it is held, you cannot decide because the only person who decides whether it is in strict conformity with the constitution, it is not the player. Again, it is the same Supreme Court. And number three, now they said that it is within 60 days like Article 143 of the constitution requires. So that uh, even in my view, it is not available for a person who has gone to court and got an effectively three orders to say you are comfortable with one, but you are not comfortable with okay. these other two. But finally, right. yeah. is this, that uh, sometimes I think there is a bit of lack of humility we, in NASA, in the sense that the constitution as it exists today says that uh, parliament has a supreme right to make laws. Number two, it says that all problems of the country, parliament has a constitutional mandate to deal with them. So that the issue now becomes this. Remember, there was, uh, during the Kibaki years, the 2007, mm -hmm. 2012. Mm -hmm. At that time, ODM had a majority. And you can imagine how that majority was seriously leveraged in order to push for their political agenda. Now, even these elections, they gave a mandate to Jubilee. 
We cannot start to try to delegitimize that mandate okay. and to criminalize it right. in a way that now effectively you, the, an ele uh, the parliamentary elections was lost, but at the end of the day it appears like the discussion is not now going to be held where constitutionally it's supposed to be held. Okay, it and you're saying outside. outside. Oh. Can, I just, uh, can I just ask this? Because uh, much as, uh, you know, we all appreciate the fact that we've had some really vibrant and robust debate on the Constitution and this article and what it says and whether it works, that we may somehow have been caught up in the legalese and that sort of conversation rather than, you know, people. Yeah. I, I would like to start no. here, actually, <laughs> because there's been a lot of yes, yes, go, yes. legal, legal arguments, yes. but there's a sense in which, you know, our mothers and fathers in the village are saying, it's fine, let's quote Article 143 and 138 <laughs> all we like, but that we seem to be held hostage to, to the to law something. as opposed to thinking about the people. Uh, I, I don't know uh, if that makes any Yvonne, sense. Uh, it makes perfect sense, and thanks for asking these questions. These are important questions. What has happened in Kenya is this. We are having currently in Kenya, and you had it in 07, and you had it in uh, 2013, and now 2017, what I called a civil, a civil war amongst the Nyayo princehood. The okay, princehood, what does that mean, uh, Kibe? <laughs> yes, right. the Nyayo princehood uh -huh. uh, is a name that I refer. Remember, if you go back to September 2002, you would actually be able to see that the contestants for power in Kenya, from particularly 2007, that is uh, mm -hmm. 2007, 2013, and now, mm -hmm. are the same people who are members of the Moi cabinet. All of them, Mudavadi, Kalonzo, Uhuru, Ruto, everybody was a member of that cabinet. Mm -hmm. Now, these are guys who are all looking to inherit the former President Moi. Mm -hmm. Now, these people are people who believe that for some reasons, they have uh, a, a divine right to be presidents of Kenya. Not because of any special ability, but uh, as some divine that were acquired at that time. Uh -huh. Now, when we, are, we have amended the laws of Kenya, you'd be able to see there's a significant change when you come to the judiciary. The judiciary of 2002 is quite different from the judiciary we have now. In parliament, the same, the guys who are in parliament in 2002, uh -huh. completely, you can, I don't think you have more than 10 mm. that, that you have them today. But what is it that has not changed in Kenya? What has not changed in Kenya is that the same princess of 2002 uh -huh. are the same princess staking for power today. Okay. So that in a sense, we have in what we call a political stasis in Kenya. All right. So that in my view, uh -huh. ask you, how do you come out of this? These people will always generate a crisis when it is just a civil war amongst the princehood. So it is this civil war in my view Sooner or later, the princehood would have to give way to other Kenyans who have never believed that you have this right to, okay. divine right to govern right. Kenya. Okay. I think for me that's a fundamental crisis All right. as far as I can see this. Uh, I have a, a slightly different take. I think the, the, the question you asked is a, is a more fundamental one. Um, uh, and I think it asks more why do we have these laws? And it's to look at the purpose of why we went for reform, why through the 90s people were throwing rocks and stuff. It's not just so we'd end up with a series of words um, uh, on a document. It is really a discussion about how Kenya should be governed, in whose interest Kenya should be governed. You know, and I think that when we are confronted as we are now with questions about whether we can have an election that is credible, you know, um, uh, as against a timeline. We've got two principles here that we've got to weigh and decide which matters to us more. Is it that we do it in 60 days or is it that that election is credible? And I think if you look at our history, it will tell you that what really matters to us is the credibility of the election. You know, so that if we've got a person who's there, who's standing up, the person who's supposed to run the election telling you I cannot do it, 
you know, I cannot guarantee it that it's going to be credible. That should give everybody, whether you are in NASA or in Jubilee, pause for thought. It's not simply about going through the mechanics of doing it. Don't forget, all the governments we've had since 63 have been fundamentally legal, but not necessarily credible or legitimate. It is that legitimacy we are seeking. You know, and for as long as we can utilize the legalism, and it's, it's a big problem, I think, right now, that most of the discussions we have, as represented here, are being done by lawyers. Mm. And they will privilege law. They will privilege the letter mm. of the law. We need historians in these discussions. Mm. We need other a wider perspectives, people who will tell us why it is we wanted this. And then we can ask, because even the Constitution itself is always a work in progress. It always, should always be renegotiated. People sit and talk about it and discuss, see what works, what doesn't, okay. you know, and stuff. And I think if we kept our eye on the ball and asked what sort of society we want, as opposed to what sort of uh, document, you know, mm -hmm. or sort of a legalistic mm -hmm. sticking to a set of rules, mm -hmm. um, I think we ask the former questions, then we'd be in a much better place when we are moving forward, and we could have much more um, helpful and uh, uh, inclusive discussions, rather than okay. ones that sort of keep pushing people away and saying, your concerns don't matter because there's an article in the Constitution that says this. All right. Felix? We, we need historians, and I'll revisit history. In this country, every time we've been in a situations like this, it is not the letter of the law that has helped us. And unfortunately, the present situation is lost in the legalese. Uh, lawyers talking about articles and things like that. To an extent that to a large, uh, it contributes to the stalemate. But look at our history and why the ordinary monainchi at the end of the day is not interested in the letter of the law, but is interested in solutions that can avert a crisis, such as the crisis that we are facing now. In 1992, it didn't take the, the legal process. Uh, to be able to repeal Section 2A, for example. Mm -hmm. It took a political process, political pressure, and things like that. In 1997, when we were faced with a situation such as this, uh, serious uncertainties uh, whether the, we were going to hold the second multi-party elections in 1997, everybody was saying that go to parliament, go to parliament. But it took an outside political settlement that was subsequent, subsequently entrenched in uh, in, in law, law through the IPPG model. Mm -hmm. In 2007, following the, uh, the unfortunate situation of post-election violence, following that disputed election, uh, people were told to go to court to have the situation resolved, apply the law. It took mediation process that was led by uh, the African Union through Kofi Annan, and it was uh, that mediation process that was subsequently entrenched into the Constitution, the National Accord and Reconciliation Act that uh, Gadara was talking about. And then the process of the 2010 Constitution was not a legal process. It was a political process that uh, accorded us a Constitution for the first time since independence. The problem with the present leadership is that, I mean, in all those situations, it required serious leadership and compromise. President Moy had to compromise, despite the fact that he, the, the old constitution vested in him a lot of powers. Uh, President Kibaki made his own compromise. The dangers that we are having with this, the present situation is this, is that this conversation is ex inextricably linked to the 2022 elections. To an extent that there are people in Jubilee that cannot see that we have a crisis that we need to resolve without applying the politics of 2022. Okay, I'd, I'd like us to start uh, concluding now. Uh, Kibe, when we started, you talked about, you know, that there is a crisis. Well, I mean, everyone is anxious about, uh, you know, where we are, what will happen in the next three days. So... What will the 27th of October look like? And do you think that this election that's coming in three days will solve the problems? You talked about what NASA is doing being tantamount to treason. Uh, you know, you faulted the DPP for being quiet on some of the issues that are happening in the country. So we have an election in three days, and then we wake up on the 27th, and, and we're good to go. Essentially, will we have sorted the fundamental issues we, you know, we have with, that we're facing right now? There's only two that uh, are going to be resolved. One is that uh, there would be fidelity to the Constitution and the order of the Supreme Court. 
as in uh, we are required to do this by the constitutions. By honoring the constitutions, I think to me that is uh, one of the highest calling you can have in a constitutional democracy. The second issue that uh, is, not, is going to be resolved, although this is not going to be done perfectly, is that in the face of a determined opposition to repudiate elections as an exclusive mechanism to decide who is going to be the president of Kenya, even elections is held. That would have vindicated uh, the elections because this is not something rare across around the world. In Congo, in South Sudan, in uh, Museveni, these people have been avoiding competitive elections, but it has largely been those who are in power. So we are the, we are the converse here, that it is those who are in power who are actually insisting on the legitimacy of elections. But having said all that, this is not to say that we are going to have an election without NASA. I admitted it, I was the first one to do amongst the lawyers associated with this jubilee. We are likely, we might have some kind of a spectacle we are likely to have a defective outcomes, whichever way you look at it, because uh, I look at the, there is being a high possibility that you are going to have significant disruptions, which actually explains why I'm also happens to be the lawyer for Mr. Kosing, David Kosing, mm. the Pokot South MP. Mm -hmm. but so that that's a real problem that needs to be addressed. Because any elections with Kinau Court and other political minnows will never really be an elections in any genuine sense or sense of it. Because wow. even when I go <laughs> to vote, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, which I intend to do, uh -huh. I'll be going to vindicate those two important principles for me. Okay. But, I don't but you said it'll solve I some of the problems and the, not all. Yes. I, so how do we yeah, solve precisely. the other problems? I will not then? feel like it is a real election. How we solve yeah. these are the real problems, thanks for that question, is this. As I said, when you are in a generation like in football, Messi is the best in mm -hmm. his generation. Maradona used to be the best in his generation. I think the time has come just to accept a simple issue, mm -hmm. that for the generations of Kinaraira, Kinauhuru, Kinamudabadi, you've had a situation whereby the best happens to be Uhuru and Ruto. Now, it is really for these people, if you love your country a little bit, <coughs> we, I love my country, I've decided to serve it as a constitutional lawyer, okay? I can serve it in other issues, but I don't have to insist. Okay. Now, but the, the but, important but yet there's other people who are coming up and you're saying precisely. now that they're there, it won't be a real election. So why should Uhuru Kenyatta participate in what you say won't be a real election? No, because Will he have is, legitimacy? It is obedience to the constitution. Okay. You see, the questions of legitimacy, when you obey the constitutions, you can only offer yourself. And actually, this question arose the other day yeah. before the uh -huh. Judge Chacha. When the question arose that about the interpretation of those uh, high court orders, uh, and we are saying, you see, people misunderstood the case of Kosing, like it is saying, Raila Odinga, you must contest this election. I said, no, far mm -hmm. from the truth. Uh -huh. The truth is this. 30 seconds. In Kenya, yes, yes I'm like finishing. Finish. Yeah. The, the truth of the matter is this, that in Kenya, the people who have mainly told us they want the presidency mm -hmm. has been Uhuru, and Raira. Okay. So that when you declare an election, uh -huh. it is almost like a requirement, you go and contest for power. So All if right. you exit, mm -hmm. you don't want to go and do the elections, then the one who has offered himself to go for the elections, okay. even if you will be competing with Minos, there is some legitimacy. All right. You would have wished the okay. legitimacy okay, is with the two giants, <laughs> but right. it will not be. Okay, Felix, <laughs> we have like less than uh, a minute. Well, with all due respect <laughs> to my uh, learned colleague, that is a pre-2010 thinking, that hold any election, however shambolic, and uh, call it an election. The 2010, uh, the post-2010 scenario does not allow us to encourage that kind of thinking. Fidelity to the Constitution, I agree, but it has to be an election that is in strict conformity with the Constitution and the election laws. The present situation can be averted. The, this, we, have been in the, we were in this situation in 2012, when a question arose as to the, the, date, the date of the next election, yeah. Uh, under the, I mean, the first election under the 2010 constitution. Uh, the high court judges then, Lenaola, uh, David Majanja, and uh, Mumbi Ngugi, had the first opportunity to deal with this issue. 
And despite the fact that the 2010 Constitution had entrenched elections in August, and despite the fact that the practice since 1992 in this country was holding in elections in December, mm -hmm. they actually uh, made a decision a ruling that uh, took us to, tw uh, to March. Of, uh, that's how we ended up with an election in March. That decision was affirmed by a five bench judge, judges, including Chief Justice David Maraga then. What we need, the, we, and the, the, this is also the best practice. Nigeria was faced with a similar situation in 2015. The chair of the, electoral, the Independent National Electoral Commission of Nigeria, INEC, Recognizing that the country was not ready, the biometric cards had not been distributed, and the Boko Haram insurgency was posing menace in the northern states, he, decided, he made a decision to postpone the elections. Okay. The ruling party PDP and mm -hmm. President God, Good Luck Jonathan mm -hmm. op opposed it. They didn't want a postponement because their stronghold was intact. It takes leadership. The situation that we are in requires honest and candid discussion. And I think that is the, the route that this country should go to. Okay. 27th, what will it look like in a minute? Well, uh, <laughs> I think whatever happens, um, whether or not um, uh, you have talks to postpone the election or you do have the election to go ahead, um, uh, on 27th, we will still have a very divided country. We will still have the very same problems um, we have now. Elections don't solve problems. People still have to sit down and talk about it. We have for too long ignored the fundamental problems that are there with our polity. And which is the solution power sharing? Kadhara, no, because every time you hear talks, then, you know, Nusum Kate comes in. No, no, it's not about uh, our power sharing. Mm. It is very much a discussion of how you form governments that have broad legitimacy. That while you have elections such that the people who lose those elections can sit back and say, we lost them fairly. You know, and I think that is a discussion we need to have. I think fundamentally we need to have discussions about how we reform the colonial state that continues till today in the various laws we have um, when we were talking the break of, about the penal code DTC. You know, how we fix that because that is at the root of why we have the problems we have today. You know. So 27th, um, whether or not we have an election, whether or not it's credible, our problems continue. You know, and let's actually start focusing more, I think, on Kenyans rather than on our politicians. You know, let's ask what works for us, you know, not just in a myopic sort of short term mm -hmm. thing, but in the longer term. And I think in the longer term, we would all agree that our history has shown that when, when significant proportions of our population feel that they are removed and marginalized, whether it's from power or from access to resources, <laughs> ATC, we have problems. We have continuing problems. And I think our history shows that it has been a fight throughout to try and include rather than exclude. All right. And that's what we should be more, I think, focusing on. Okay, thank you. Patrick Gadara, Felix Orr, Kibem Mungai. Um, an interesting uh, conversation. Uh, and some interesting thoughts. Uh, that's our discussion for tonight. The hashtag is Checkpoint. He can continue to have the conversation there as we must with just three days to go to the repeat presidential poll. We take a break. We'll be back with the day's sports news. My take is also coming up next.